Anybody remember this? According to the New York papers, a large group of black people in Philadelphia viciously attacked white college kids for no apparent reason. And this happened in and around the campus of Temple University, which, by the way, has the largest private police force of any university in America, though it is far from the largest school in America. Anyway, this went on for two hours. Six white kids were taken to the hospital, beaten and bruised pretty good. Who, knew how, who knows how many more were beaten? 200 black people attacking white kids for two hours. After it was over, the Philadelphia reporters climbed all over each other to remind everybody this attack had nothing to do with race. They were led by the Philadelphia Inquirer slash Daily News columnist Janice Armstrong, or is it Janice Armstrong, who, who, was, who asked the question, why is everybody making this about race? This had nothing to do with race. It was all a big coincidence that 200 black people would rampage through a largely white campus in the middle of a black neighborhood and beat the hell out of these kids. Oh, and by the way, this is far from the first time that has ever happened. Black mob violence against students at Temple University is a regular feature of life there, and students are constantly warned about it. That was a few months ago. A few days ago, there was a football game between a, between a school named Cheltenham and a school in a town called Quakertown. And uh, during the game, some of, these stu some of these students in Quakertown may have, well, they may have said some impolitic things to some of the students visiting black students at this football game. Though curiously, there, there, is no, there are no recordings, there are no videos. It's just a bunch of kids saying those white people were threatening us and calling us nasty names. The same reporters who were in such denial, deceit, and delusion about this large-scale episode of black mob violence at Temple one of many, cannot, cannot play the race card quickly enough on this episode. The incident involving racism had some in Quakertown worried what happened might cast their whole community in a bad light. Today, though, neighbors told our Bill Anderson that the actions of a couple of middle schoolers most definitely does not define them. He reports, for goodness sake. This is not indicative of Quakertown, and that's what hurt. The news on Monday was disappointing. Parents of Sheltonham High School students say that there were racial slurs and rocks thrown at the football team and cheerleaders by we now know middle school students during a Friday night game against Quakertown. Angry is not, not the word, a uh, correct word. I, it would be, I was embarrassed disappointed and, and frankly it broke my heart. The situation was serious and shouldn't be dismissed, but that was Friday. That was Monday. From Quakertown. Yeah. yeah. She said you're cheering for both teams today. Yeah. yeah. Tuesday was a completely different story for students and community in Quakertown. They were embarrassed and they wanted to, to make good on it. You know, what can they do? A small group of community parents and students showed up to make it clear that they won't let the negative actions of a few define them. She's got a big heart and didn't like what it speaks as far as the community and she said that she wanted to make a sign because it's not right what they did i'm sorry for what our children did it was wrong it was hurtful and i feel absolutely horrible about it so that's why i'm saying we are so sorry sheltonham this time it was the sheltonham soccer team playing at quaker town and an impressive response from people who could have said it wasn't me it wasn't my kid it wasn't most of us they could have said any of that but they chose a different tactic. Because we're trying to teach our children that this is unacceptable behavior in our community. And it's very important to be here to support both teams. 
in love and encouragement. This is my, my family's message. If people in this country feel like they're not welcome, <laughs> that they're not going to be treated the same as everybody else, then we're not a great country. Now, the small but public display was necessary for the public, but the real action will take place with the students who are watching how all of this is being handled. This is not just a teachable moment. This is hopefully a paradigm shift, uh, looking in the mirror at ourselves and taking that opportunity to say, hey, what, what, how can we make it better? Listen, no disrespect to the two teams playing today, but it was about much more than a soccer game. Today was about a community stepping up, acknowledging a challenge not shying away from it and doing what they can to address it. For goodness sake, I'm Bill Anderson. And the same reporter who wrote that big column about quit trying to make all these attacks at Temple about race. She's, she, she now has a new column with a new headline. Cheltenham tries to heal after racial incident at Quakertown game. And she goes on and on and on and on about how black people are relentless victims of relentless white racism all the time, everywhere. That explains everything, especially why white kids are always picking on black kids in school. Well, that little fairy tale has gotten a lot of kids in Philadelphia hurt because there's, there's a lot of parents in Philadelphia who actually believe that fairy tale and they send their white and Asian children to school with black people with very, very dangerous and violent results. Because black mob violence is an everyday fact of life in Philadelphia schools. Here are two recent examples. The first example is going to be a shooting, but the shooting happened during a large-scale episode, large-scale episode of black mob violence, which is a regular fact of life in that neighborhood with students from that school. ...is in critical condition after being shot in the back of the head Wednesday night in Oxford Circle. Now, two days later, prosecutors have charged an 18-year-old with attempted murder. His name is Mohammed Good. He is behind bars tonight. Fox 29's Seanette Wilson live from Philadelphia Police Headquarters tonight with this story. Seanette. Well, Chris, the victim's family is relieved and grateful for the police officers who put him in the back of a patrol car and rushed him to the hospital. They are also relieved that that suspect is in custody, but they are disturbed by the fact that that 18-year-old had a gun. 16-year-old Messiah Shiverton remains in Aria Torsdale Hospital tonight, two days after he was shot. His condition, unresponsive and extremely critical. This is the hardest thing she ever going to have to go through. Rosita Patterson is his grandmother. She says her daughter is too distraught to talk. And this is senseless. Teenagers need to stop it. Everybody needs to stop it. Like, you know, there's not going to be another generation if y'all keep killing each other for nothing. Police say it happened just before 4.30 Wednesday afternoon. 18-year-old Muhammad Good is arrested and charged in the shooting. Police say officers on patrol saw Good at Bustleton and McGee Avenue firing several shots at the victim, then running off. Police caught him on the 2200 block of Unruh. They believe Messiah was the intended target. Shot one time in the back of his head. It was completely unresponsive. When he got to Aria Tarsdale Hospital, he never regained consciousness. Former Philadelphia Fire Commissioner Derek Sawyer is Messiah's uncle. We're all praying that he recovers from this because at 16, he's too young to lose his life. Family members say Messiah is an 11th grader who is an all-around athlete. He plays basketball, football, and lacrosse. Sawyer says what happened has changed everyone's life. And the reality is that we lost two young men, not just one, because uh, that young man, when he goes to jail, he doesn't get a chance to live his life either. Police have not released the motive in the shooting, and the family says that's not the only question they have. My biggest concern is how did an 18-year-old get their hands on a semi-automatic gun? I don't understand that. And we, I think we need to work on trying to figure out how we can get the guns off the street. Police say a high school student shot last week in Northeast Philadelphia has passed away from his injuries. 16-year-old Messiah Shiverton has been in critical condition since the shooting last Wednesday. He was shot in the head on the 2100 block of McGee Avenue during a fight with other teenagers. Police arrested 18-year-old Mohammed Good. He's facing a number of charges, including attempted murder, which will now likely be upgraded.
that second episode of large-scale black mob violence after a, after school let out in a Philadelphia neighborhood is also a regular feature of life there. How many dozens of stories have we done about that? Cheltenham, the parents all got together and were and were embarrassed, humiliated, shocked, ashamed, all those words at the misconduct of their 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 children in their school. They start they could not apologize enough. Yet we see all this other black violence, some of it directed at white students, we've documented here. There are no apologies. Where are the apologies from all the black people to or all the violence directed at students at Temple University? Now, you know what happens at Temple? Every time they have a commu community meeting at Temple, the number one topic of conversation in that meeting, as recently as this week, is gentrification. And how all the white kids at Temple are taking over the black neighborhoods, forcing them out. We cannot let them do that. And uh, lots and lots of uh, hostility. Lots and lots of black on white threats going on. And there's just lots and lots of black on white violence in and around Temple. But not one apology. Not one. A lot of explanations. Not one apology. Because we know what happens when black people apologize for this enormous level of violence and chaos in and around their schools. All we're going to do is make a lot of black kids angry. 